Hi, my name is Len Marses, and I'm a legacy steward with the McDowell Sonoran Conservancy in Scottsdale, Arizona. And this is my buddy. This is Franco Farina. I'm a master steward with the McDowell Sonoran Conservancy. Hi, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about some people who lived here 7,000 years ago. But before we do, look around. Welcome to the Sonoran Desert. This is called a desert because it's very dry and usually very hot. There's very little of this, very little water in the desert. And yet, 7,000 years ago, people lived here. They didn't have any stores. They didn't have any McDonald's. They didn't have air conditioning. Mm -hmm. And yet, they managed to survive. How did they do it? Yeah, that's a good question. And we survived today. But even in those days, it was so difficult to do it, really. That's what we're trying to explain to you. Uh, the people that lived here between seven and 5,000 years ago, they were called archaic culture. What is archaic? Archaic means old. And the culture they will live in, that, that means uh, how people live together, the rules they have in their society. Uh, do they have the house you have? Mm -hmm. No, they were living in brush, built homes, uh, cool in the summer, uh, in the winter as well. That was very nice. Uh, they were hunting and gathering. There they were food. Uh, they were hunting big animals, usually deer, uh, and uh, that kind of animals. And uh, of course they were hunting where? Um, this is the place where the, most of them they were hunting. Washes, because the animals, they go where the water is the most. So how do they do the hunting? Len, show it to us. So it was a family business. The, the women and the children were walking north toward the, the hunters and, uh, and moving the deer toward them and when they get to the point where the hunter is that's where the spear will go that's it so that's the where they were hunting so what if they couldn't find deers big animals there were other meat that they will use well certainly um, did you say bunny well yeah bunny was one of them uh, they will eat snakes. I know they are dangerous, but they're, they're, snakes can be eaten. Uh, they were eating uh, mice. Uh, there were uh, a lot of little creatures that eat during the night. They live on the night, and uh, that was also a source of meat for them. My friend Franco told you about hunting for meat and all the delicious things that mm -hmm. they used to eat, like snakes and rats and mice and deer. But what did they do to get vitamins? What did they do to get calcium to build strong bones? Well, they needed vegetables or seeds to be able to do that. And that meant that they had to get what they needed from desert plants. For example, this is a Palo Verde tree. And what they would do the ancient people, the archaics, is they would collect seeds and grind the seeds down into a powder or a flour and then they would bake a bread, a flat bread from it. What they would do for milk is they would go to this plant, which is a buckhorn choya, and in the spring when it sprouts buds, they would pick the buds. And this amount of buds was roughly the equivalent of about five ounces of milk. So that's where they would get their milk. They would get fruits and berries from other trees. How would they carry this stuff in the middle of the desert? Hmm. Well, that's a good question. You might think that they used pots. 
but they didn't have pots. What they used were baskets. But why would they use baskets and not pots? Oops! What happened to the basket? It just dropped. Still one but piece. But look, the basket is still in one piece, so it doesn't break. But if, as an archaic person, I had a pot and I dropped it, what do you think would happen? It would probably break into many, many small pieces and I would lose everything I had in it and I couldn't use it anymore. And that's why they didn't use pots, but preferred to use baskets. But we talked about the fact that they didn't have any milk. And one of the great problems with not having milk is you can't have ice cream. But Franco will tell you how they solved that problem. I don't know. How can you survive without ice cream? Chocolate ice cream, for example. That would be great. But no, there was no milk at that time. Uh, they came with uh, the Spaniard, with the European, when they came to this country. But not before that. And that was seven, five to seven thousand years ago. There was no milk. Um, they had the need for sweets, had everybody else. So there are plants here in the desert, believe it or not, they have a lot of sweets. Uh, the saguaro that is up there has uh, fruits that start in uh, April, May, until August. And these fruits are really sweet, red and sweet. Uh, prickly pear also start in July, August, September. They are really sweet. I suggest you try. You can find in some stores sometimes. But how did you get this fruit? Okay. A little stick like this, which is the bone of one of the saguaro, with a, a, a little uh, pea uh, over here at the top, it can use to reach to the, to the fruit on top of the saguaro and take it down. Uh, it's a delicacy for all kids and family. Well, that about wraps it up for our visit today with people who lived here 7,000 years ago. About 2,000 years ago, their culture, their way of life, began to disappear. Where did they go? We don't know. Perhaps they moved somewhere else where the hunting was better, or perhaps they stayed here and became part of a larger and different group of people a different culture. But they left us with lots of interesting information about how they lived, which tells us a little bit about why we should be interested in history. It's because history teaches us how people solve problems. History basically explains to us how people solve problems. I'm Len Marzen. I'm Franco Farina. Stay, Stay interested, interested in history. history.